evening. Good to see, uh, I believe, the largest crowd we've seen so far. So uh, thank you all very much. I am Keith Ordnow. I'm currently your city council member of position four. It's been an honor to serve you for the past three years. And I do ask um, that you allow me to serve you for another three. In the past three years, what I have seen, and I believe what y'all have seen over the um, many years, this is a wonderful city. We keep getting better. I was born in the, in the community, graduated from Pearland High School. I want to see my children that also graduated from Pearland High School move back and raise their kids in this community. In order to do that, we have to take care of our infrastructure. We have to take care of the base, the foundation where all your tax money has been poured for a very long time. What we've learned is currently we're not doing that in budget. We budgeted $400,000 towards road maintenance. Just did a study. The study told us to keep roads in the current condition they're at. We need $3.5 million a year. We're going to have another million from sales tax revenue we're going to put at it. Let's round up and say that's $1.5 still puts us two million short every year. So my question is, is that what we want to leave for future generations? Is that what we want to leave for our kids? Or do we want to look at small incremental tax increases, let's say 50 to $100 a year per $200,000 home? That would solve our problem and allow us to move forward. If you look at tax rates from the late 80s, early 90s, Pearland dropped the tax rate dramatically for the city. In my opinion, it was a little too dramatic, and we've just got to step that up a little bit. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Adrian Bell, and I'm running for Pearland City Council position number four. And the reason that I am running is because I want to be your voice on city council. I believe that it's time that we start tackling the traffic issues that we have in our city, and especially in Pearland West area along 518 and 288. I am an advocate for the police and for our continuing to make sure that our communities are safe for all of our residents. I also believe that as a one of the most diverse communities in the Houston area, that we need to embrace our diversity. One thing that I will often bring to city council is diversity. And I'm not speaking of my ethnicity, but I'm speaking of my diversity of thought, my diversity of action, and my diversity of ideas. I believe that we need to have a newness, we need to have a freshness, and we need to have new ideas at the table. I truly believe in teamwork. And as a team member of the city council, I believe once we have a strong team, we can make a lot, a lot of things happen. So I welcome your vote. I'm, I am currently a doctorate student at Texas Southern University. I am working on my higher education uh, administration uh, degree. And I have been a Pearland resident since 2009. And I grew up in Houston. But Pearland is my home by choice. I came here because I want to be here. And I want to make sure that we have a community that is robust, that is fulfilling, and that is prosperous for all of our residents. My name is Adrian Bell, and I'm running for Pearland City Council position number right, so I'm Adrian Hernandez, and I'm running for position two. And I'm an interactive kind of guy, so I need to ask how everyone's doing tonight. Everyone all right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Excellent. I am the owner of the drink station here in Pearland for the last seven years now, and I actually see a lot of my customers here, a lot of my friends and so forth. I'm kind of a, a new resident, uh, but I moved here as quickly as I could. I just felt that I was doing a lot of fighting in the city, but I didn't have a voice. And so I got here now that I have an opportunity to kind of project my voice. I'm also reaching out and talking to all the people that come and talk to me on a daily basis and want to project their voices. Pearland has given me so much. I mean, they have just lifted me up and made me feel like I have the, the world at my feet and I've opened my store up to the community and they have come in. When we first opened, our couches were donated by customers. All the artwork in my store was donated by customers. Our television was donated by customers. The work in our store after we had the hurricane, we had vandalism issues. Customers, and those are people who live in Pearland. Pearland has literally given me so much that this is my opportunity now to give back. And I'm giving back with my ethic, with my work ethic and my diverse background as a former high school teacher, 
as a professional musician with the Eastern Grand Opera, as a business owner, as a former owner of a technology company. In each one of those scenarios, I stay put until I get the job done. While business owners, we are faced with battles every day, we're movers and shakers, we're innovators, whatever you want to call us, but we go out and find out how to fix things. And we do it with super limited budgets, we do it with just very limited information sometimes, and that's what I'm bringing to the council, if you will like me. So I do want to thank you for having me here tonight, and I ask for this wonderful opportunity to serve you and give back for all the great things you've given to me. Thank you very much. All right, hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, I want to talk uh, a little bit about myself, my background. Uh, my name is Trevor Perez. I'm a candidate uh, for uh, Pearland City Council, position two. Uh, I, uh, I'm a father of three kids, all of which are back there playing. Uh, ages four, five, and six. Uh, so if you do the math, my, my wife has been pregnant for about three years running. So she's kind of here in our family. Um, uh, I'm a husband. My wife is an attorney. We both work. Uh, it's a lot to balance. Uh, so uh, taking this job of uh, trying to be a council member was an easy decision for us. But I felt as if we need people who are knowledgeable, who have experience about the city in this position. I felt like I offered that to the city. Uh, and I felt like uh, if people like me are willing to run, are willing to sacrifice for the betterment, uh, betterment of our city, uh, then, then what are we left with? What, uh, who do we end up having to run? Uh, and so not against our, uh, uh, the other candidates in the race, they're both, they're all three uh, very good guys, but uh, I think what we need on council is knowledge and experience. So what do I bring? Uh, again, I was a staff member, I was on the engineering staff, uh, I served as uh, the uh, the engineer that managed all the development in the city. I worked with the chamber to help uh, improve um, some of our criteria and uh, try and balance uh, the needs of the community and the needs of new developers. I'll make sure that new developers that come in uh, aren't 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 really in the community that would negative, negatively impact uh, the adjacent property. Uh, I'm also the only candidate regularly attends all the council meetings. I know precisely what's going on right now uh, in our city, and I think I offer the best opportunity to hit the ground running uh, when, uh, when and if I'm on the council seat. And as a civil engineer and a land development expert, uh, I think I know the best about how to grow our city in the future. Thank you very much. My name is Derek Reed, and I am a candidate for position two of Maryland City Council. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I am married. Uh, my wife has been married for 11 years. We've been married for 11 years. Been together for 16 years, actually. Have two children, a two-year-old and four-year-old, and a lot of new gray hairs. Um, I, uh, I actually <coughs> was born here, or born in Houston, Texas, but was raised in New Jersey. Moved back to Texas uh, for high school. Graduated in uh, graduated in 1996 and went on to the University of Texas at Austin. Graduated from there with a degree in electrical engineering. Uh, practiced as an engineer for about five years, and then for some reason decided to go to law school. I'm still trying to figure out why I did that. Um, I, uh, while I was in law school, I got my real estate license. So I practiced as a realtor uh, during, during my law school years to make some money. Um, after I finished law school, I started off in civil law, but I first became a civil servant in 2009. Uh, I became a member of, or an assistant district attorney with Harris County, um, and that was my first introduction to civil service. I did that for four years and came back out in 2013, but I quickly went to another civil service position, and that is a, as a commissioner on the Paraland Planning and Zoning Commission. And so I've been on the uh, commission for about a year and a half now, and I'm the only candidate that is actually involved in city government. I'm the only candidate right now that actually meets with city council at least once a month uh, and making decisions on our growing city. Uh, I have a plan for the city. It's called Building Our Future. It involves the three C's. The first C is crime, the second C is community, and the last C is commitment. I would love to speak with you all about it. I have information in the back. Um, again, my name is Derek Reed and I'm asking for your vote for Carolina City Council position two. Thank you. What? do we value in this community? What do we value? Do we value quality homes and neighborhoods? Do we value a safe environment? Do we value a quality police force? Do we value qualified individuals and professionals? Do we value 
increased business opportunities. What also do we value in a candidate? Do we value a long track record in the community? Do we value professionalism? Do we value in a candidate, the only candidate professionally qualified to manage projects and works in the oil and gas industry? Do we value these, this experience and translate this over into the $400 million in capital improvement projects that we have slated for the growth and development of our community? Do we value these things? Do we value a proud husband and father of two? Do we value public education? Do we value all these things? If we do, then I ask you and tell you that the candidate before you is the only professionally qualified individual to manage projects as a certified PMP project management professional. The only candidate with the most experience working in our community, for our community, through various service organizations, the chamber, the, the parks board, professional experience. What do we value? If we value experience and workmanship and work in this community, then I ask you for your vote and I ask to represent you on council. I will be humbled and honored. My name is Quentin Wilkes, and if you value these things, I ask that you go to the polls and select Quentin Wilkes for your next city council. Thank you very much. In order to support the continued unfunded issues in the city budget, would you consider supporting either a large bond or a tax increase to address these issues? I think I've been clear on that over the past three years I've served on council. Um, it, it, it's a tax increase, and whether it's a bond or just a straight tax increase, it's a tax increase. Um, if, if you will look, right now, 60 Almost 70% of your property tax goes to pay off debt. That's backwards. We should be spending that on operations, not on debt. The problem is we have extended our debt out through bonds and been able, by doing so, what we've been able to do is, in my opinion, artificially keeping the tax rate low. That's not a good plan for your personal finances. It's surely not a good plan for the city's finances. We need to pay off debt. I voted, I was one of two votes to um, restructure debt that would have taken some of our debt, paid it off five years quicker and saved $8 million in interest payments that do you as a resident no good. Thank you. In order to address those kind of issues, I think we need to look at the budget in a, a larger picture because that's just a little, it's a small microscope picture of that. One thing I know is when you increase anyone's taxes for any amount, you need to explain to explain to them why your taxes are being increased. When I talk to residents in West Pearland who voted on a bond in 2007 and a park is yet to be built, it would be very hard to talk to them about any type of tax increase. And I believe one of the things we have to do is be more communicative with our residents and I would vote for what we need to happen in the city, but also would vote and make sure that the residents know why we need increases and we need to take care of our budget and reduce our debt as well. It's funny because uh, Keith and I, when we were in Austin, uh, sat around during the Carolina Day in Austin and had a long debate on this, long healthy debate. I think uh, we both had uh, some varying ideas, um, but brought a good, healthy amount of information to each other about how we deal with it. Uh, kind of borrowing what he was saying, you know, our, our tax rate right now, our property tax rate is 0.7121. Uh, 49 cents of that, or the 0.49 of that, goes to paying off debt. I mean, I think, personally, we're at bond capacity. I, I don't really want to support another bond uh, if we can avoid it. But, you know, in order to make up the revenue, I think we at least have to get to the tax rate that was voted on in the 07 referendum. It does mean an increase. Uh, but, you know, ultimately for everybody, it's probably about $50 a year for the average tax bill. So it's not as terrible a condition as some make it out to be. It's not preferential to raise taxes. I want to make sure our tax rate is competitive with our sister cities, but I think it's a necessity. Thank you. Our, our debt to service ratio right now is, I want to say it's 70% to 30%. And so um, we owe 
has, has already been said too much money uh, in bonds and whatnot. Um, so I'm not for a bond. I'm not also for increasing our taxes. I think what needs to be done is to look at the overall budget <coughs> right now, see what other places we can uh, restructure and, and take money from other places to put uh, towards things that need to be fixed or things that need to be uh, taken care of um, and just reprioritize uh, the, the issues that we have right now. So to answer your question, I'm not for a tax increase and I, I definitely would want to avoid uh, another bond. Yes, yes, and no. Yes, a tax rate increase is inevitable. To pay for the things we want, we have to invest. I think it should be done uh, smart, and so I think uh, utilizing and leveraging uh, federal grants or state grants or funding from all sources uh, to accomplish the things we need uh, is going to be it's going to it's going it's going to be what will help to uh, pay for the things we need. No. I don't uh, agree with uh, Council Rodeo in that we don't need another project manager. I think that's the problem, is that we're telling people what we want. The people will go to the polls and elect who they feel is right for the position. So yes, yes, and no. Thank you. Well, as far as taxes and so forth go, I'm one of those, I mean, it just immediately hit me. I had a very similar conversation with the, uh, another West Ender who was talking about a, a sports complex that was ever built after they voted on uh, all this money to be spent on it. Years and years later, it still wasn't done. I said, what's the deal? What's going on with the city? I said, well, that's an excellent question. I have no idea what's going on with the city, but I deal with these types of things all the time. You know, my business, for instance, you know, we have increases in costs all the time. Like right now, there's the port strike. I have stuff sitting on boats. If I raise prices, I lose customers. So what do we do? We figure out how to make it more efficient, figure out how to make it better, not necessarily leaner, because we want to provide the same high level of service, but better. And I think that's lost sometimes. It's always add, 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 add. Sometimes you got to move things around, strip things down, but make them better. And that's my mindset. I don't know any other way to put that. But thank you. No, again, you know, I, I would like to leave you with this. What do you value in your community? And what do you also value in the candidate? Do you value a candidate with long-term community experience working in this community, for this community, as a resident for nearly 10 years? Do you value faith? Do you value commitment? Do you value professional and corporate experience in holding gas? Do you value relationship building and community engagement with residents? I think a councilman should be well-rounded and be able to communicate effectively with the public and be able to work with council. And if you value these things, then I value your vote and your support, and I ask for your vote and your support when you go to the polls. And one last thing, the polls are on Mother's Day weekend, and so if you value giving my mother the greatest gift ever, <laughs> you vote for Quentin Wills for Paraland City Council. Thank you very much. It was actually stated during the uh, school board uh, panel uh, that there's five things that are needed to work uh, collectively in a group. Um, and I, I don't remember exactly what those five things were, but the one thing that I was looking for was you need to have the ability to humble yourself, you need to have the ability to work with others, and you need to have the ability, especially as a public servant, to set aside your own, not necessarily values, but your own wants and needs for that of others which is you, the voters. And so, and I have that. I've been a public servant since 2009. I'm currently doing that right now, setting aside, in, as a uh, commissioner with Carolyn Planning Zone Commission, setting aside my own wants and needs for that of those that live in our community. I'm asking for your vote for position two, Carolyn City Council. My name is Derek Reed. Thank you. Again, thanks everybody for coming. Thank you for putting this on. Uh, yeah, but, you know, let's talk about value. What do you value most in this position? I think I think you're going to value most experience and knowledge in this particular position about these particular issues that come before council. Knowledge and experience, I argue, I have more of than any other candidate. Um, you know, I, I I don't want to speak to you in acronyms and alliteration. I, I want to speak to you about some particular things that we can improve. I, I've said this many times. Look, I don't have all the answers. I want to work with council and be able to come up with the best solutions 
but I do feel like I know the right questions to ask, and I know what programs work and what programs don't, and where we need to improve. I think that's what you want on, on city council, that knowledge, that experience. So vote Perez uh, on May 9th. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. All right, so I've had a lot of people asking me continually, where's all your stuff? Where's all your push cards and your collateral and all that stuff? And I haven't spent a single penny on any of that stuff. Not a single penny on my entire campaign, because I don't think I should have to. I mean, I can get my message out there by talking to people. And also because I've made my message really simple. When people ask me, what is it that you value? What is it that you stand for? I say, no, oh, what is it that you value? What is it that you stand for? So whenever you think about me, whenever you think about Adrian Fernandez, Think about yourself, because I'm here for you. That's it. Nothing more. I'm a simple guy. Thanks. If anyone asks you why you should vote, or they should vote for a new mail for Fairfax City Council, I want you to tell them for me. Tell them that she cares. Tell them that she cares about Pearland and all of its residents. Tell them that she will give voice to their concerns. You tell them that she will work hard for them, because she cares for them. I am not a politician, I'm a servant leader, and it is my desire to serve you, it is my desire to make Pearland a bigger and a better place than it already can be, but to make it a better place than what it is today. So I ask for your vote, Avery Bell, Pearland City Council, position number four. I, I do have push cards. Um, they're, they're back there in the back. Keep for Pearland.com, a lot more information on there. Honestly, if you want to talk about service to the community, I'll go up against anybody's record on this stage. I'll go up against almost anybody's record in this room. Um, I, I'm born here, raised here, started serving the community when I was in high school, actually junior high, working on the bond issue that failed the first time, and then putting up signs for the second one, Bill Carolyn High School on 35. I am active with the residents. If you will ask other council members, we get emails from the forums. I respond to 98% of any comment from a resident. My cell phone number is on my web page. My council email is up there. My personal email is up there. Contact me. I will tell you what I think. I will get the answers from staff if I don't have them. And we may have to agree to disagree, but I will communicate with us. Thank you.